Okay, hello, welcome to a micro video. We're going to think about, for a few minutes, the concept, the important welfare concept of consumer surplus. Take a moment to think about a time when you enjoyed a great price deal, where the price you paid for a good or a service, maybe it was a Black Friday deal or something, was well below the price that you'd be willing to pay for something. Now, the gap between the price you paid and what you, what you would have been willing and able to pay is called consumer surplus. Let's think about an all-you-can-eat buffet in, a, in a, maybe a city centre. table below shows what a consumer is willing and able to pay for visits each week to an all-you-can-eat buffet. Now, we normally assume the law of diminishing returns holds so that the willingness to pay may well fall depending on the number of visits per week. The marginal satisfaction from each successive visit perhaps goes down and uh, a rational consumer should be you know, willing should go ahead with a, a, a purchase if the price they're willing to pay is greater than the cost. Well, let's assume the cost is five pounds per visit. There is some consumer surplus for each visit, seven pounds for the first visit, six for the second and so on, all the way down until the fifth visit where the price they're willing to pay, five pound fifty, is just above the price they pay, five pounds. But for, of course, for the sixth visit, the price they're willing to pay, £4, is less than the price they pay. That would give them negative consumer surplus and they probably wouldn't go ahead with that visit. So consumer surplus is the difference. The difference between the price that consumers are willing and able to pay for a good or service. Which is essentially shown by the demand curve and the total amount they actually pay for the good or service. And the area of consumer surplus, often tested in an exam, the amount or the area of consumer surplus is the area, usually a triangle, underneath the demand curve and above the market price. This, of course, assumes that the price charged is the same for all units consumed. Let's take a, a quick example. Let's take a hotel offering short breaks, short weekend breaks, for happy couples pictured in the slide here. So here's our demand curve for the price of a short break. And the, when the demand curve cuts the y-axis, essentially that's the maximum price that people are willing and able to pay in the particular market. This is the market for short breaks at a, at a hotel. So there'll be somebody willing to pay about £200, but thereafter uh, you have to cut the price to get more people into the market. I'm going to assume the supply of rooms for each weekend is fixed at 50 rooms. So that's a perfectly inelastic supply curve here. And in theory, you could sell all of those 50 rooms by charging a price of £100 for a weekend break. But of course, there are some people willing to pay more than £100. If you think about the demand curve here, this demand curve here shows that they're willing and able to pay more than £100. So there's some consumer surplus. It's the area underneath the demand curve and above the market price of £100. And that's, that's, that's sort of an area of consumer welfare. Consumer surplus is the area underneath the demand curve and above the market price. We can actually work this out numerically. You may be asked to calculate the area inside a triangle and it's uh, half the base times the height. So it's 50 times 100 times by 0 0.5, giving a consumer surplus here of £2,500. Let's develop the idea, think about uh, changes in demand and supply and how they affect consumer surplus. So first of all, take a shift in demand. Let's take the market for flashcards. Let's assume initially that the business such as Tutor Due is selling revision flashcards at a price of A and they're selling a quantity D. The equilibrium in this market is where supply meets demand at point C. So the initial equilibrium is price A and quantity D. And uh, well, what's the area of consumer surplus here? It's the area A, B, C. The area above the price, which is A, and beneath the demand curve, shown by the line BC. Now, what happens if there's an increase in demand? Let's say we're getting close to exams and market demand for flashcards increases from D1 to D2, an outward shift of demand. Notice here now that the total willingness to pay has gone up from B to E. So the maximum price people are willing and able to pay is now higher in the market. As a result of a shift in demand, 
the equilibrium moves from C to G. The price goes up from A to F and the quantity sold goes up from D to H. Now, what's the new level of consumer surplus? Initially, it was area A, B, C. Have a think about this. Press the pause button if you want. What's the new level of consumer surplus in the market? Well, the answer is it's area E, F, G, because now the price is F, the quantity is H. There are people willing and able to pay more than F for those flashcards as a much bigger area of consumer surplus if they're charged a price F. In fact, there's a, a gain there. Let's go back a slide. <laughs> There's an, an increase there in consumer surplus. EFG is the new level of consumer surplus. In some exam questions, you're given uh, letters and you have to show labelled areas to find the right answer. You may be asked to do a consumer surplus calculation. So what was the consumer surplus at the price £5 when we sold 100 And what's the consumer surplus at price £6 where we sell 180 have a go at this question. I'll come back to you with the answer. Regional consumer surplus was £250. The new consumer surplus, the bigger area, people are now willing to pay £14. They pay 6 and we're selling 180 So the area in that triangle is 8 times 180 times by a half equals £720. So an increase in demand increases the level of consumer surplus. What about the effect on consumer surplus of an increase in supply, an outward shift of supply? Let's take a the market for avocados. The original equilibrium is at point C, the price is B, quantity consumed is D, and the consumer surplus is A, B, C. Now let's assume there's a bumper harvest. A bumper harvest, supply shifts out from S1 to S2. There's more supply in the market. What happens to consumer surplus? Well, the price is going to come down. It's going to come down to point equilibrium G, price E. The quantity is going to go up to quantity F. Original quantity was D. Original consumer surplus A, B, C. What's the new level of consumer surplus? Following the increase in supply, price falls to E, quantity goes up to F. The new consumer surplus is area A, E, G, compared to A, B, C. That represents a gain in welfare, an increase of B, C, G, E. So consumers have benefited from the fact that avocados are now more cheaply available. They can buy more. The willingness and ability to pay hasn't changed, but supply conditions have changed. Brought the price down. As a result, producers have cut the price and the consumers get a better price and they can increase their consumer surplus. There's an important link between consumer surplus and the price elasticity of demand. Let's just quickly look at that. Let's take this market. Let's take the market for I don't know, takeaway coffees in the town centre. Loads of, loads of choice. And here we have drawn the demand curve as fairly elastic. D1 has drawn the relatively elastic demand the price is B. What do you notice about the level of consumer surplus? Well, it's fairly small. It's A, B, C. And why is consumer surplus low when price elasticity of demand is high? Well, the main reason is probably there's a limited opportunity for the seller to increase price. There are so many substitutes in the market, so much choice, that if they were to raise the price, people would simply switch to another seller. So the price they're being charged is a low price B. People don't have a high willingness to pay anything other than than price B. Contrast that with this slide showing an inelastic demand and here there's a lot of consumer surplus. In fact the demand curve may not actually cut the y-axis certainly on my slide. So there's a big area of consumer surplus available and uh, consumer surplus is high when elasticity is low. Well typically because there are very few closed substitutes there may also be a necessity for consumers to buy in which case there's a high willingness and ability to, to pay for the product. Now, of course, producers can take advantage of this by changing the price. They don't necessarily have to charge price B if they know there's a lot of consumer surplus. They could, for example, raise the price from B 
to A. Okay, they lose sales. Sales go down from D to E. But as you can see here, there's a big area there of extra revenue that the seller could extract or capture, turning consumer surplus potentially into extra revenue and profit. Well, we'll come on to that when we think about producer surplus, but a monopolist, for example, a firm with market power, could in theory increase the price when elasticity of demand is low because they know there's a lot of consumer surplus there and in theory they can turn that from consumer surplus into producer surplus. So there we go, this has been an introductory video looking at the important welfare concept of consumer surplus.